friends welcome to tech lake youtube channel uh, in this ongoing spark sql video tutorial so last session we started with a spark sql creating a database and now i am going to explain you about a databricks file system why because uh, when it comes to databricks or spark right so backend is a distributed file system or you can say data lake so that we should have some basic idea before going uh, more detail in spark sql so previous session just i introduced how to create a database how to create a table and where it will store uh, that information i have explained so go through those previous video and this video primarily we will focus on distributed file system what is exactly data lake distributed file system and uh, how we will communicate in databricks so that we will see let's start with the session i'm going to share my screen okay so if you go to the community edition, right? So previous session, I've started with how to create a database and uh, where it will create a database. Now I'm going to create a new notebook. Primarily we'll focus on DBFS, or you can say distributed Databricks file system, Databricks file system. So Databricks file system is primarily to communicate a data lakes, to communicate data lakes that may be any data like dbfs so databricks file system so the two kinds of api is available one you can use a percentage fs another one python library which is dbutils.fs so one is you can go with a percentage fs another one is dbutils.fs this is python library and the separate one is which is file system and uh, any file system like uh, if you worked any linux operating system or unix operating system or windows operating system file system basic operations like ls ls means listing files listing files it may be hdfs or it may be uh, linux file system so basic file system operations like if you want to create directory mkdir so mkdirs is creating directory creating directory and similarly, if you want to copy files, so CP, CP is one of the option for copying files. Then another one is MV, moving files. MV is moving files. And then if you want to remove files, we can use RM, remove files. File or files. When it comes to recursively, if you want to remove, then forcefully recursively with this minus R option. Removing nested folders r files recursively minus r option and uh, if you want to create a file if you want to read data so put is one of the option for creating data file creating data file and similarly if you want to read data you can use head head is one of the option for reading data file so these are our basic file file system commands which we should have idea first we'll start with the uh, dbutils so dbutils.fs is one of the class dbutils is library if you use a python help function in this class you can find multiple functions those functions are these functions yeah okay you can see this copy file reading file listing files creating directory mounts mount uh, moving files placing files removing files you can see this so mount unmount also we can we can create a mount point to access data from any data like now we'll start from basic ls operation so ls is one of the function input argument which you can give the path i will give a root path ls means listing files you see it is listing files so it will give you information about the path name size of the file or like file in the bytes modification timestamp if it is a folder right so folder zero bytes and the modification time also zero it will give you if it is a file it will give the information and the similarly you can use a percentage fs as well so percentage fs also you can use ls listing files db utils also you can use db utils also you can use here you see this so the file system you see this starting with the dbfs databricks file system then colon your path whenever you whenever you create a databricks community edition right by default everyone will get this 
Databricks data set. So they are providing plenty of sample data files for PYC purpose, for learning purpose. If you want to use, you can use those data sets. So backend, that, those data will be available in Amazon S3, Amazon AWS S3. Even community edition, storage, compute everything at AWS S3. Now, and here it is displaying a text format. If you're looking for HTML format, HTML table, you can go with the display. So display is one of the function which you can use and it will display in HTML table like this. HTML table like this. Yeah. These are our folders and each folder will have a files again. If you want to look at that, okay, you can see that. You see this. So here, if any file is available, the file size in bytes, modification time, which is Unix timestamp. If it is a folder, again, same thing, the folder which you can specify here, in that folder, whatever files are available, it will list that. It will list that. You see this. Okay, now, let's use percentage fs then i want to create a directory mk dirs mk dirs where in a root root i want to create a directory name as ravi or learning with ravi just i'm going to create one directory name as learning with ravi mk dirs is one of the option to create a directory same thing which you can use a function here instead of ls you can use mk dirs now, if I list, use ls, I can list that directory will be available. You see this. Now, I want to copy this file from this location to this location. So, how to copy file? You can copy a file from which location? This location. Whenever you are copying, right, always use the paths in double quotes. Then, source location, destination location. My destination location is this one. space i want to copy that file cp means copy now you can list now so the new file will be available adult.data it's a adult data and the data file name and the size in bytes unix timestamp unix timestamp now if you want to read this file this is the full path this is the full path if you want to read the file what you can do percentage fs id is one of the options which you can read the file. See this data is available. It's a CSV file, comma delimiter file. It is having a more data. It's a comma delimiter data. Now, I want to create my own file. I want to create my own file. So consider if I go to my GitHub account. So I have a sample data file. Let's I'll take one sample data file here employee.csv file okay or maybe department.csv file go to raw then copy this data it's a, it, this is also csv file this is also csv file so how to create a file even you can use a dvl you can specify the first argument as file name with the location learning with ravi this is the folder inside that file name as department.csv comma data if data in a single line you can use a double quotes if data in a multiple lines use a triple quotes okay first argument is a file name with a location second argument is your data data in multiple lines use a triple quotes i'm going to create a file now file is created now you can verify in this location okay file is created where in this location another file or did we specify any wrong spelling mistake yeah spelling mistake so that's why it's created another folder so i want to create a file in this location so that will create a dynamically even we can see that now file should be available in this folder okay so this is the file even if you want to read the file you can again read Okay, now, 
So I'm going to read that file. You can see the data is available. Whenever you are reading the file, right, path, the path you can specify dbfs colon or even if you're not specifying colon also, by default, file system, it will recognize Databricks file system, dbfs. Okay, it will recognize that even if you're not specifying also. Now, what we did, we listed a file, we copied a files, we created a file, we read a file, put is for creating a file, head is for reading a file, and even you can read using the same dbutils, dbutils dot fs dot head. Both are same. This will display in HTML tab, uh, text table format. And if you're looking for HTML table, then you used to use a display. So, but the display here, it is a different format, right? So, only you can use a ls for listing files. This is the data, right? So, the same data it will display. New line character. That's a new line character. That is the difference between dbutils and percentage fs. Now, next, I want to move this file. I want to move this file to maybe another location. Another location. Play the file I want to move. So, fs, mv, mv means move, move from this location the file is available here to another location i'll create a folder called backup okay now whenever you go with the mv mv is nothing but cut and paste so it will remove file from here then it will place into this location let's verify now let's verify so don't get confused on FS or DB details, both are same. Both are same. Whatever you are comfortable, you can use that. This is the root folder. You don't see now this department.csv file because that we moved from here to under backup. It is available here. Okay. So under root folder, there we created a folder called learning with Ravi. There we created a backup. There we moved the file. So this location to this location. Copy means just source will be there target won't be available and paste remove rm rm option to remove the file remove the file okay only that file will be re and uh, if you look at that, you can't find that file, but directory will be available. And uh, again, another file is available in a, this root directory. You see this. And if I want to remove that entire directory and uh, subdirectories and folders, so which you need to go with recursively. So because it is throwing exception saying that it is not empty. Empty means you cannot remove non-empty folders non empty folders you cannot remove only empty folders you can remove now minus r which you, you can use this option recursively you can remove all now that folder is not available insert that files also directory is also not available file red as it's not the how many points are there. so db utils dot fs dot mounts so this will give you listed mount mounted paths i'll use a display i'll use a display as i told you right every data bricks inbuilt it, it will have a mounted path these are amazon s3 Amazon S3 mounted path. If you go to this path, you can find a lot of data files. If you go to this, you can find a lot of data files for machine learning, for data science, for data engineering, images, videos, documents, CSV videos, CCTV videos, bank data, credit card for machine learning, for data science, government data, delta sharing photos so a lot of data files you can find this 
So this backend is a data lake, nothing but AWS data lake. So when you look at the cloud level, three data lakes, one is AWS S3 data lake, another one is Azure. Azure is having a blob storage and data lake separate, which is a data ADLS Gen2. And the third one is GFS, Google file system. Google file system. But default community edition will be uh, available at AWS S3. When you go with the enterprise data set, depends on which you can come, which you can create a mount point at any data lake. Any data lake. When it comes to Azure, Azure will be using Azure Data Lake or Azure Blob Storage. Azure Data Lake or Azure Blob Storage. So, what is Data Lake? Data Lake is a distributed file system, DFS. Okay. So, any data lake, it may be Azure, it may be Google, or it may be AWS. Concept is file system, distributed file system, backend distributed storage will be there. And front end, you can see the file system like this hierarchical folder structure. One folder within that another folder, a number of folders, all size, unlimited size, and number of folders, any type of data, n number of folders and files. Any type of data means you can see this. Some folders will have a video, some folders will have images, text files, CSV file or DAT file. You see this. We'll call it as data lake. Unlimited storage, unlimited storage, hierarchical folder structure. That's the advantage of data lake. So before like uh, we should have some basic idea in Databricks when you are communicating a data like right. So Databricks is providing a file system operations. One is a percentage FS, another one is library, Python library, dbutils.fs. This class is the library which is available, which you can use this, which you can communicate any file system, which you can communicate any file system. Okay. So next video will continue in Spark SQL. So this is just a knowledge purpose with having a more SQL operations. You should have some idea about where it is storing, how it is storing. So that purpose, I'm giving this knowledge. Databricks file system. Databricks file system. It's a client which backend is Amazon S3, default in community edition. Thank you. See you in another video. Have a good day.